We'll do a full video later on specific to box turtle right now. I just wanted to go over some of the design choices and how it operates and what makes it different from other available filament changers out there. To start with, box turtle is a modular filament changer. So you can build it and configure it to be as many lanes as you want. You'll notice that one's three, someone's built one with six, there's a couple with five out there. But you're not just limited to the one unit using the AFC clipper add-on. You'll see this printer's got two of them hooked up to it. And something else is actually paired with that printer to give it a total of 10 lanes. So starting up top, every lane has its own respooler. These are driven by N20 gear motors. The reason that we went with those is they are compact to keep the form factor of the box turtle. It's actually a little bit shallower than an AMS and it's just like an extrusion width wider. But what that allows us to do is have forward assist going. So when it's loading, the uh, spool is unspooling actively instead of being yanked on. If you've used an AMS, you might know what happens when those start to get kind of empty. And that was just a way of addressing that and also always re-spooling the filament tightly because these again are bi-directional. The filament pass starts right here on the trigger. See each one's got a little inlet. And when you insert the filament, what happens is the AFC clipper add-on starts spinning the extruder to take that filament and put it in a load state. You can see that the status light changes once it's loaded. So this guy is a night owl. This is the lane nine and 10 I was referring to earlier hooked up to the printer. And you'll notice that it has filamentalis. And the reason we did not go with that is one, when these fail, which is not frequent, but when they do, all they do is unspool your filament. If this happens to fail, then it's just gonna operate like normal until it does a tool unload. Then you'll have whatever length between your box turtle and your printer kind of just hanging instead of it just constantly unspooling it. And there's no way of portraying this on video but these spin so much freer than filamentalists ever could. It's just a lot less drag on these. Moving to the bottom of the box turtle, those same triggers I was just talking about right here, they are normally magnetically closed. There's a small bearing in there that kicks it open. There's a micro switch. And that's what tells the system that there's filament loaded this is also your initial runout sensor. And once that's triggered, it comes into the extruder and there's another filament sensor in each extruder. And it will park the filament about right here. So when each of the lanes is loaded and you call a T command, a tool change, it queries the hub here, which has another filament sensor, make sure that it's clear. And then it'll take that lane through the hub make sure that the hub is loaded and then proceed to the tool head. Another thing is these extruders being direct drive like this with no servos, this is always fully engaged. Your box turtle can be very far from the printer. In fact, I've tested it up to 25 feet. In fact, they perform so well that if you don't use two millimeter inner diameter Bowden tube from the extruder to the hub, these are perfectly capable of pushing the filament through the sidewalls of the Bowden tube. We went with these NEMA 14 pancake motors because testing with NEMA 17s, not only were they heavier, we weren't really able to get any higher speeds. The spooler extruder combo here is good to about 320 millimeters a second load speeds. When you install the AFC clipper out on, the default's gonna be 150. And the weight matters for applications where you're gonna be hard mounting it or just setting it on the top panel of a printer. And you, this thing weighs about eight, nine pounds when it's fully skirted and pretty. That was just a weight reduction choice and they perform very well and reliably. Between your printer's tool head and the box turtle, we have this tool head buffer. It's just two micro switches that detect the position of the slide here and how this functions. The Bowden from the box turtle comes in to a set point and this part connects to the tool head, basically giving you 30 millimeters of expandable Bowden. That way, if there's any discrepancies between 
the box turtle's extruder and your tool head. We can adjust the rotation distance on the fly to keep everything operating happy. And typically having this extra bit of filament where there's no load on it just just helps the tool head not have to experience any extra drag from the system. Having brushed motors, this system does require a quote unquote custom board. Uh, this is the AFC Lite by i6 Tech, specifically for Box Turtle. Of course, it's a clipper board, so you could use it for other projects if you wanted. You can see it's got the four brushed motor drivers on it that are bi directional. And for quick reference, the MMB that's typically used in the carrot feeder, this is a version two, was once upon a time also considered a custom board until it was more widely adopted. And while I've got this here, one of the things that really sets Box Turtle apart is there's not a selector. All of the extruders have constant engagement instead of depending on a servo to then press on a top hat to engage that filament. And then when you unload, you do not have to worry about that filament being in exactly the right spot every time. So for things that are still being worked on right now, other than documentation, so we've got a bypass that we're working on. This is just so you can load a spool up to your printer manually. And it will just, with the filament switch, just automatically disable your filament changer. And we've been playing with the buffer a little bit. This one is repulsed to always try to close without a coil spring and to make hookup and servicing easier we've got a small expansion board it's got a 24 volt fan driver on it for electronics cooling this lets you use usb and a barrel jack or you can use can and can out to daisy chain your box turtles and these re-spooler tires are printed in TPU. LDO has tooled up some molds. These are 78D injection molded rubber tires. I believe they'll be offering these for people that are not too comfortable printing TPU. Plus LDO will have this glitter turtle green with gold glitter in it coming soon. There is an enclosure. I just got the panels today. That will be made public very soon. And for active drying in the enclosure, we're looking at probably using poly dryers off the shelf mounted to it, just so you don't have to mess with DIY air dryers and keep it nice and simple. We're still working on clipper screen, but for mainsail and fluid, this is basically the same thing as what the clipper screen will look like. You can see we've got both of the turtle units identified currently, which lanes are loaded. You can do remapping of each lane and you can do infinite spool. You see the infinity symbol here is red. That's because there's not an infinite spool identified. If I do that, it will turn green. And if this spool runs out, then it will move to this one. And we can also remap everything if we need to. It's coming along nicely. To recap, it's a modular expandable filament changer that's not tied to just one unit with the AFC clipper add-on. It's completely expandable and it addresses some of the issues like having spool management that other systems typically just sem seem to ignore. Box Turtle is in a really stable state. There's not really any changes to make other than just some quality of life stuff that we were working on, as I mentioned. Kits are available both from i6 Tech and LDO currently. I think i6 Tech is sh shipping a little bit sooner. LDO will have them out mid-January.